In the early Middle Ages, the Christian Church denounced popular beliefs in witches and ghosts as pagan superstitions. Those who considered themselves witches were believed to have been deceived by the devil in their dreams, and accounts of ghosts were largely understood as encounters with demons and the devil, who tricked Christians by appearing as the dead. It wasn't until the 11th and 12th centuries that the church began to accept the existence of ghosts as souls from purgatory, who visited the living to ask for their assistance in getting into heaven. It was even later than that that the church began to accept witches were real. During trials of Waldensians in the 1420s, tortured peasants created fantasies of their engagement in witchcraft that centred around a mixture of folklore and their basic understandings of Christianity to create the image of the devil-worshipping witch. That portrait was critical to the persecutions of the witch trials of the 15th to 18th centuries. So, by the beginning of the 16th century, the popular belief in ghosts and witches that had always existed amongst the medieval European peasantry was joined by a new orthodox belief held by the Catholic Church in a different kind of devil-worshipping witch, who flew about at night to witch sabbaths where they ate babies and received instruction from the devil. Up until this point, medieval European laws had tended to make accusations of witchcraft risky. If you were unable to prove your accusation, then you could easily find yourself subjected to the same punishment those you accused would have received. This happened to a man in Strasbourg in 1451, who accused a woman of being a witch. Having failed to produce a proof, he was drowned in the local river. As the church gradually accepted their own image of satanic witches, European states became more open to accusations of witchcraft from the peasantry, allowing for great opportunities for the kinds of witch hunts of the centuries ahead. In 1517, a monk called Martin Luther sent a letter to a cardinal professing discontent with the practice of selling certificates meant to absolve people of their sins. This began the Reformation, which diminished the Catholic Church's control over Western Europe, allowing for greater debate on issues which they would previously have had more sway over. One of these issues was the existence of ghosts. In 1570, a Protestant called Ludwig Lavater published a book in which he denounced the existence of ghosts from purgatory, claiming that they were in fact simply demons who wished to deceive the living by masquerading as the dead. The debate between Protestants and Catholics as to what ghosts actually were continued into the 17th century, when proponents of the early Enlightenment began to express their view that ghosts and spirits didn't exist at all. Ironically, this led to a response from both Catholics and Protestants, who argued that ghosts really did stalk the night, publishing ghost stories as they hoped to oppose the threats of atheism, despite the fact that some of the major ghost deniers were themselves Christians. Skepticism about ghosts had lower stakes than skepticism about witches, for which there were extensive legal implications. Yet, debate about witches mirrored debates about ghosts, beginning with questions as to whether witches actually perform magic or simply imagine they did, and ending with a sceptical denial of the existence of witches at all, as Christians published tracts of accounts of witches and witchcraft in the hopes of convincing atheists that they did exist, and with them, ghosts, the devil, and God. As it became increasingly clear, at least amongst the elite, that the supernatural powers attributed to witches were not actually possible, the 18th century saw a move away from laws persecuting witches for satanic meetings, and a move towards prosecuting those who claimed to have magic powers for fraud. In 2018, a woman was prosecuted under one of these laws for pretending to practice witchcraft in Canada. Since then, the law has been scrapped. However, whilst Europeans no longer burn or hang witches, and beliefs in ghosts have likewise faded from the mainstream, Concerns that mirror those that late medieval and early modern Europeans had about witches are much more modern than one might think. Throughout the 1980s and 1990s, beliefs emerged in the United States that people were meeting up to worship the devil and perform various nefarious acts, including eating babies. These beliefs spread throughout the English-speaking world and into Europe. Supported by professional social workers, psychotherapists, and members of law enforcement, they saw dozens charged in prison for ritual satanic abuse on the basis of incredibly dubious evidence, usually the testimonials of children who had undergone a discredited form of psychotherapy supposed to recover lost memories. Memories recovered included incidences of alleged abusers killing giraffes and magically flying. Whilst many of those convicted have since had their sentences overturned, not all have, and those that did sometimes spent decades in prison, pointing to how, even in the modern day, we are not beyond the reaches of mass hysteria. 
Mostly, though, European authorities no longer entertain beliefs in evil witches or malevolent ghosts, and in a visit to Angola in 2009, Pope Benedict XVI affirmed the non-existence of witches in an attempt to diminish the attacks on vulnerable people that such beliefs inspire, signifying a return to the Catholic Church's early medieval stance. For those that are vulnerable to persecution for witchcraft, it's a stance to be thankful for. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's the second in a series on the history of the night time. The next one will be about how Europeans of the past slept totally differently to the way we do today. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content, then remember to like and subscribe. If you want to read more about medieval and early modern beliefs in witches and ghosts, then check out the sources listed in the description of the video, and feel free to drop a comment with your thoughts. And if you want to support the channel further, then check out my Patreon. I'll see you next time.